one of the questions I get asked a lot is, I'm creating a startup or I'm in a startup, should we be using microservices? And it's sort of, you know, when you are in a startup environment, you've got this sort of clean sheet of paper. You can pick whatever tools and technologies you like. And I think we, we often uh, gravitate towards the kind of sort, of sort of sexy, interesting stuff in those sort of unconstrained environments. The reality is when it comes to something like microservices, I'm far from convinced it's a good choice for an early stage startup. When you're just starting off on your journey, you're still trying to find out what your market is. Does anyone want to use this product? You've got a great idea, you've got a small team of people that are passionate about exploring this space, seeing if anyone wants to use the product. And so really I think the energy that you have and the, the limited resources you have should be focused on finding out, does this idea resonate with people? Does anyone want to use this product? Does anyone, does anyone want to actually believe this idea is something that they want? While you're in that stage of still trying to find your market fit, you're going to be iterating a lot. You're going to be making fairly drastic changes potentially on product direction. I mean, you can look back at companies like, I mean, you know, uh, so Uber started as a high end limo company, Flickr started as a company doing, uh, well, actually, it's an organization doing like an online game, right? And, and they pivoted during that process they found another market for them that was much better for the for what they're trying to do they could reach more people that way and so the, the the issue is early on you're going to be exploring this space and what you end up actually taking to market or what ends up maybe resonating with your customers could be quite different from what you initially think you're going to be building and that's a problem with microservices because we do need some stability in our domain to find stable boundaries around the services when you see a sort of a high pace of change around the fundamental nature of the problem domain you're working on, you could end up spinning cycles, just constantly making breaking changes across surface boundaries. You're also sinking a lot of time and energy in, into you know, building and running and managing a distributed system. If you're creating a startup, are you trying to prove that you can build and run a distributed system? Or are you trying to prove that, some, that you've got a product that's going to resonate with your with potential customers out there? A lot of the issues that microservices solve are fundamentally about scale. Uh, can I scale up to handle more load? Can I scale up to have more developers working efficiently together? On the early days of a startup, you do not have those problems. Those are problems you get once you've found your market fit. I think you know, microservices are a great choice for like your scale-ups, companies that have found their market fit and are now starting to broaden their feature set to move into new uh, sort of geographies, where they're looking to sort of expand upon a common base, a common understanding about what that product is. With an early stage startup, I, you're not there. You know, there's no point trying to build a massively scalable system for a product if you've got no idea if anyone wants to actually use that product. My advice for startups in general, and there are some exceptions, is that you're probably better off sticking with a more monolithic architecture. A simpler deployment topology is much more likely going to give you the benefit to focus your, your time and energy and bandwidth on building out your product reaching your customers, finding out what they need. You don't have the luxury of loads of people to support this stuff. And, and often, you know, putting investment into building a sort of more complex distributed system, it's like more, it can feel more like sunk cost in a way. You, you, know, you build this infrastructure and architecture based on a product. You sort of change the product, but you, you feel unable to unpick all of that architecture and that big sort of complex Kubernetes stack you've built up or whatever else it might be. So stick with really, really simple things. There's a great reason why so many startups work and start with Ruby on Rails. It's an excellent choice for getting a simple web application to market quickly. You know, offload as much work as possible to public cloud providers, make use of service products if that's what you want. But I would be really tempted to keep things as a simple monolithic system. Maybe a modular monolith, you know, but keep it simple to start off with. Once you start finding that market fit, you start getting a firmer understanding about what it is you're going to be building, you'll have a better understanding as well as to where the constraints are in that system. There's no point designing a system for scale until you understand where the scaling bottlenecks are. And so once you've got, you know, you're, in, you're six months, you're a year in, you're starting to find your feet, at that point it becomes a natural time to say, okay, well now maybe we want to consider bringing some services into our ecosystem to help us solve different problems we've got. So don't jump the gun, don't go too early. You start uh, you know, adopting microservices too, too soon in your, in your startup journey, it could end up being a millstone around your neck. You know, what's gonna make you different is your vision, your product, your execution of that product. You don't need necessarily to take on board all the burden of building a distributed system in the early days. 
If you want to know more about how I think about microservices, I've got two books available, Building Microservices, which I'm working on the second edition of that already, and I've also got a brand new book coming out, it's called uh, Monolith to Microservices, which is available in all good bookshops now and online, obviously. If you want to know more and to keep up to date with what I'm doing here, please like this post because that helps me um, subscribe, put the bell on as well so you'll get the updates when they occur. I'm going to be doing posts about sort of frequently asked microservice questions over the coming weeks, so if there are any questions you've always wanted to know the answer to, feel free to, to send me a comment and uh, you'll be hearing more from me soon.